going to start. Yes, so we are recording the webinar and I would like to welcome everyone uh, to the first webinar after our IATF Poznań conference which took place between the 16th and the 18th of uh, September. And uh, uh, I would like to welcome, first of all, Marta Rosińska and Grzegorz Śpiewak. Good evening. Would... Good, evening. <laughs> Good evening to both of you. Uh, and I would like to remind all of the participants that both Marta and Grzegorz are uh, uh, not only very active teachers, publishers, but also very active participants of whatever activities take place in IATF Poland. Just a brief yeah. reminder, Marta holds MA in Linguistics, University of Łódź, and also Advanced Diploma in English Teaching Management at the University of Cambridge. But she is also a graduate of Uczelnia Leona Koźmińskiego, so that is a very, very interestingly balanced port professional portfolio. And also a graduate of social competencies trainer program. Um, and she is head teacher trainer and director of studies and the English, uh, at the English Language Center uh, uh, at the University of Łódź. But she also participates in all kinds of activities and among others, she participates in IATF Poland conferences very, very regularly, uh, individually or together in a team with Grzegorz. They like being in a team together, but also, but also uh, in many other initiatives. And now very briefly, if I have forgotten about anything, Marta, just, just remind uh, the participants about it. Grzegorz, it. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> teacher, trainer, uh, project manager, advisor, materials reviewer, and author. And I think that this range of activities already tells us what kind of personality uh, Grzegorz is. And uh, he used to be academic lecturer uh, uh, at the English department of the University of Warsaw, and now ne the new school for social research in New York. And... Uh, this is really very important to mention at this moment that Grzegorz was a once IATF Poland president, so he is in the club of, of renowned uh, personalities who used to be uh, IATF Poland presidents. Um, now he's on the board of advisors, such is the rule in IATF Poland. Uh, he's the head uh, consultant for Macmillan Education Poland. Uh, for the region of Central and Eastern Europe. And he's also the president of the OS uh, uh, English Language uh, T, uh, ELTA and Teacher Development Center. And he has been nominated for British Council E. L. Tons uh, Award uh, in 2016. And he's the winner of two European label awards, Youngster Programme, and then the, uh, the Domo English for Parents. If I have missed anything, just remind us no, about it. It makes me feel like I'm dead already. It, looks like... <laughs> <laughs> it makes Thanks. me feel like you are you are really a role model, uh, to, uh, which I could just try to, to follow. Okay, just a few words about this webinar. I, I am really impressed by the way both of you approach language learning teaching procedures so education uh, in the area of uh, English language. Uh, and you refer it to the so-called 21st century education, which requires much more than just teaching grammar, vocabulary, or language skills. And you write in your summary that you really care about adding this value added uh, tax to English language teaching. And so inspire us about how to do it. Over to you. Wow. <laughs> it's very hard to begin after this kind of introduction, isn't it, Marta? <laughs> well, yes, uh, I believe, you know, we, we all get inspired by one another rather than just the two of us. But yes, we will do our best. Right, so perhaps to, to open with the, the very title, uh, Lucina already sort of uh, 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 gave it away a little, 
uh, although we of course explain it in the abstract. VAT of course is not about uh, discussing uh, recent developments in taxation, <laughs> but yeah. rather about, as Lucina said, adding something that uh, uh, Marta recently labeled value added teaching. Uh, and uh, our aim tonight is to share a, a little uh, in way of you know how we define it, what it what we think it is, and how it might indeed contribute to what you do behind the, um, your classroom doors. Hence the subheading in the title. Yes, that's right, and uh, we're hoping to share what we um, believe uh, education. Uh, Anno Domini uh, 2022 should be uh, like, and also perhaps share a few of our best ideas, maybe. Yes, Grzegorz, to, to see we'll how see. <laughs> we'll see. can be implemented in the classroom, because I think that's what practicing teachers are, about, are after. That's right. Okay, so to be begin with, uh, uh, we would like to um, uh, uh, give you a little teaser uh, um, in the following form, uh, when we thought about uh, um, the structure of this session, um, it occurred to us that perhaps we could organize it around uh, uh, some questions. And we got inspired uh, in particular but by one uh, uh, um, project, if, if I may call it that, uh, that uh, um, uh, operated with a certain number of questions, right, Marta? Shall I sh uh, reveal that <laughs> place <laughs> straight away? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. yeah. So, yes, go for it. Right. So that, that's uh, the 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 seventy three questions uh, by Vogue. Yes, uh, something I use with my students, I mentioned this also during the conference, I had several conference now in Poznań, as a way of attracting your students to want to listen to, to English, but perhaps also try to answer some of these puzzling uh, questions. But today we're not going to try and answer 73 questions. <laughs> we'll, yeah, don't worry. <laughs> we'll have to stay till, uh, until probably midnight, but we're going to tackle how many, Grzegorz? Well, I'm not sure whether we should reveal it, but there will be certainly a, a lot fewer than 73. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. Let's see hey, how we get along. Yeah. Uh, All right. So without any further ado, <laughs> right, Marta? So uh, th the first of these questions uh, is the following. What kind of unexpected, you know, I mean, predictably, right? You know, how do we understand this very concept of VAT in ELT? And I, I think I'll let Marta introduce it first. Well, yes, indeed, uh, perhaps the, the concept is not entirely mine. The name uh, I did coin indeed, but the, the, the concept I think has been around for many, many years now, where we teachers, not, not just of English, but of all subjects, believe that there's more to um, teaching or more to education that, than just teaching our own subject. And I hope that the people who are here with us or listening to us on Facebook entirely agree that education is more than just uh, knowing how to teach your subject. It all started, Jagosh, if I remember correctly, about three or four years ago when we came across, I'm going to share a book, perhaps Jagosh can write the title of it, Ready to be a Thought Leader. Um, it's one of these books that you kind of think, oh, perhaps another, I don't know, um, silly guide or some kind of self-help book that is going to um, tell you how to go about the world etc but this book actually inspired both of us uh, to start thinking about education in a completely different way the book itself perhaps right Gregor, is not just about education but it makes certainly not yeah mm -hmm. yeah about the teacher as, as a leader and what we've been saying um, for a long time, and I think this book just basically accentuated the same thought, is that the leadership um, in, or generally leadership in education is not about uh, what position we hold in a school. Um, so it doesn't matter if you're a director of studies or the head of the school, leadership is there in your head. And this value added teaching is in a sense, a, <laughs> A byproduct, perhaps, is not the right word, but this is where it all came from. 
um, how to help teachers become leaders in their heads and their hearts, not necessarily by simply holding a position of someone uh, in power uh, at school. So to me, the concept is about knowing myself, knowing how I react, knowing how I behave, uh, knowing how a group comes from, because that, that's crucial. We'll talk about this later on. Um, and also having that kind of very wide perspective on what's happening here and now, so that we can easily translate reality uh, to our students. That's my very broad definition of value-added teaching. Dragos, and yours? And uh, I mean, of course, I uh, condone everything that uh, Marta has just said. Um, but as, as she said, and we've been talking and thinking uh, about these things for you know a few years now. Perhaps one other reference that I would like to add to this is uh, a, a classic book, really, by now, by Stephen Coey, you know, the, the one which in Polish is called Wielkość Wewnętrzna. Uh, in, do you recall the original English title, Marta? Uh, uh, internal Greatness? I have that on my shelf. But... Yeah, right. But, you know, what I'm trying to, to uh, reference here is this idea of, uh, of thinking in terms of uh, 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 how many of us actually have the courage, if you like, to even sit back and think about uh, what it is that actually defines our mission as a teacher. Uh, what is our professional creed? W what is the, 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 the kind of uh, internal value or set of values that moves us uh, as professionals, you know, beyond the obvious uh, um, that is. And I think this is something that at least, you know, when you have been in education like we have uh, for, you know, several decades already, uh, sort of grows on you. And uh, you know, I, I, I kind of find myself thinking about these things more, than, more and more. What is it that uh, is going to be my legacy? What is it that's going to kind of be left behind when, I'm, when I retire, when I'm gone? And I, I think uh, um, um, these are the areas which, uh, uh, can also uh, uh, encompass uh, this this idea of of, uh, of uh, adding value uh, to what we do on a daily basis. So you know a, a lot of that, in a sense, is sort of uh, turning back towards the very teacher. Uh, is it not, Marta? As a professional, uh, so for once we are not not only thinking about uh, what we offer to our learners, but also what it is that education does to us as professionals. And I think to me, it's it's uh, important as part of my overall well-being and uh, a definition of, if you like, happiness uh, in, 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 in um, this profession. So, you know, that would be my little two pence on the, on the topic. Yeah, it's not, not just the learners, of course, it's mm -hmm. the teachers, you know, we are at the core of education, so we have to understand our role in, in, in this education, but also, yeah, gain um, satisfaction from what we do. But this satisfaction can be actually derived from understanding who we are in the classroom and how we behave right. in the classroom, yes, and how we interact in the classroom, for example. So not just how we teach, because um, teaching seems probably far easier than the other the other concepts we have mentioned. Absolutely. Okay, so this is number one. Uh, if, by the way, if anybody has any comments, instant thoughts, reactions to what we are saying, we'll be more than happy to respond. So by all means, uh, use the chat. Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, sort of take part uh, if if you know if only you feel like like doing that. So this was number one. Uh, moving to question number two. Uh, question number two uh, is this one: uh, If VAT is roughly uh, what we've just established, that uh, the, the obvious second question is: uh, What is it that it could specifically uh, consist in behind your proverbial classroom doors, you know, when you are with your learners uh, and, and you conduct uh, uh, your daily business of uh, educating them? Mm -hmm. Question for me, or would you like to start? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Okay. Um, 
Well, it means understanding what's happening um, in the classroom, as I said, not just from the point of view of uh, of your lesson plan. So, for example, if you, I don't know, plan to teach present perfect, fine. You obviously look for nice techniques, ideas of how to introduce the uh, the grammar you're going to teach. Let's say it's grammar, can be anything else for that matter. Uh, and apart from this, you're trying to weave into your lesson um, aspects which will help uh, your learners, your students uh, grow as individuals, uh, for example, uh, and help your group of students to also grow as um, as a social construct in a sense. OK, so when I plan my lessons and I uh, I have quite quite a lot of experience, so you would imagine that perhaps someone like that doesn't actually plan their lessons because you know it's it's all in my dna by now <laughs> but i do plan my lessons because my students uh, change uh, basically now every five years i get a different generation that um, i have to grapple with and that's uh, always a bit of a challenge so whenever i prepare the classes I, I sit down and i think okay so for example today i'm going to teach i don't know word formation let's say but instead of looking for simple uh, tasks that I can photocopy from anywhere, just to you know give handouts to the students, I think uh, of how to introduce, uh, for example, um, word formation, but at the same time, combine this with some kind of concept. Um, uh, during the conference I uh, in Poznan, I'm referring to, I uh, showed um, the participants quite a few activities where uh, something looks like word formation, but there's much more hidden to it. Yes, so much more stuff underneath. And uh, one of the ideas, perhaps some of you, I don't know if anyone has been to the IATEFO conference from from this uh, from our audience. Please, perhaps you'd like to let us know. Uh, but one of the tasks was um, I suggested to the students was um, well, the teachers that you suggest to the students uh, is to create. Mm, um, adjectives from various words okay so imagine um, for example that you have to I don't know create um, an adjective um, because there are more than one but uh, let's say the one from the word adventure okay so students work on what this adjective possibly could be okay then you suggest um, another word so you suggest quite a few different words from which students can create adjectives. And of course, I could stop there and just say, good, thank you, well done. That's a brilliant activity. Um, however, uh, what, what can I do with these adjectives? Can I take this a little further as a teacher? And this is what makes me think always before the lesson, can I use this lesson for anything else apart from word formation? So once we have created the list of adjectives, um, we try to divide them into positive adjectives, negative um, adjectives, and then the students decide which of these features of character they would like to buy and which of these features of character they would like to sell if they have them. Yeah. So imagine a lovely list of, I don't know, 40 nice adjectives, um, positive and negative, and students decide uh, which of these they want to buy and sell. Uh, this then is an activity on what adjectives are seen as valuable, people want to have, yes, and which of the adjectives people want to get rid of, because these are the features they're not very happy with, which then generates a nice, very personal discussion on who you are as a person. So this is just an example. I have thousands of them, <laughs> but, but that's, that's what can happen behind your door. It can just be a word formation task. Or it can be more more to it. Jacques, in your case? Well, that was, I think, a, a beautiful, very concrete illustration of what it can mean uh, in the life of a foreign language teacher. Uh, in, what I could add to that um, uh, is perhaps not, strictly speaking, restricted to foreign language teaching and learning. However, it certainly was part of my um, a journey as a, a foreign language instructor. Uh, 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 Lucina mentioned uh, my uh, period at the new school, uh, you know, this uh, university in New York City. And, you know, when I started working there, it was a fully online program. This is, you know, a few years before the pandemic where uh, this whole idea of online uh, interaction um, uh, was only budding, uh, certainly the very first experience in my case. Uh, and the important thing about that program was that it was 
completely uh, uh, um, remote. You know, students came from virtually all over the world, you know, no uh, common uh, time zone for the group. Therefore, it also had to be completely asynchronous. It was the only way to conduct those classes. And uh, one of the things that I discovered when I uh, started working there was that uh, uh, the system was set up in such a way that uh, students had to write a, a, a significant number of uh, written uh, essays. Uh, um, it was, you know, an adult uh, um, um, methodology course uh, in English, and uh, there were set tasks on an almost weekly basis. They had to submit those um, essays or assignments, uh, and then I would need, I would uh, give them feedback, written feedback, because remember it was all asynchronous, and importantly, uh, immediately give them a grade. Uh, a numerical percentage grade, which you know got entered into the system and uh, contributed to that final performance, and and you know it struck me very quickly that uh, uh, it wasn't really giving me a chance to truly uh, um, interact uh, with those students of mine, uh, and uh, I introduced a small innovation of mine, which was I. Uh, asked the dean of the school to let me slash the number of written assignments by half. That was quite radical, but every single assignment would have to be written twice. You know, the first time around, I would only give my feedback, but definitely no grade, just suggestions for improvement. And then I would leave uh, this feedback with the student for another week where they could essentially ignore it you know, and resubmit the piece as it had originally been done, or they could take advantage of all the precious <laughs> comments that I had been painstakingly writing in, in, you know, in the, those bubbles on the side uh, in Word, uh, and actually improve on that piece of uh, writing of theirs. And uh, you can probably guess what happened. Uh, uh, very quickly, uh, uh, they, picked up that opportunity, they took the opportunity, and they actually started taking advantage of the feedback. And uh, uh, not only that, but the idea uh, gradually spread to a few other courses and some other big names in ELT who happened to be teaching uh, on that program. I'm not going to tell you who they were, but believe you me, they were really big names. You know, they actually started using that system. And uh, later on, they came back to me and they started complaining uh, that it actually increased the amount of work for them as instructors, because of course, uh, students started demanding more feedback because they felt that, you know, this kind of supporting uh, formative feedback without the grading uh, that, you know, immediately followed actually created a lot more space for genuine dialogue where, you know, they weren't feeling uh, as if they were only being judged on that performance, but they actually had a chance to um, uh, you know, have that I say, take advantage of, uh, of what uh, the instructors suggested, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, uh, to me, this is an example of this, uh, uh, you know, of, of adding value to, again, how I function with my learners, how I manage those relationships, you know, how I create space for the dialogue. Uh, but also, of course, as uh, Marta said, uh, it was, uh, it, it's really two way traffic, right? Because I mean, my increased attentiveness uh, to how they probably felt uh, as part of that course experience uh, created, uh, I think, uh, slightly uh, or perhaps significantly better learning experience for them uh, uh, over the, the course of this particular uh, module that, that I uh, happened to be supervising. So to me, there will be another specific example, maybe more global, of how we might approach that added value. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think that that works because, well, you said that it increased your workload, but at the same time, if you had um, half of the essays to to check, then basically it was probably the same amount of work, really, but obviously more effective. Yeah, Agnieszka is now commenting in the chat. Absolutely, gives the right to make mistakes and learn from them instead of only being evaluated and judged um, upon those mistakes. Thank you, Agnieszka. 
absolutely. So uh, th that's just two examples. We could go on and on and on, but I hope that uh, we are um, giving you enough of a sort of a concrete illustration to uh, feel uh, where we are coming from with, with this particular area. If you have any other examples that spring to your mind and would like to share in the chat, that would be wonderful as well. Well, in the meantime, I can share another book I find okay. uh, very, very useful. Uh, it's called Self-Esteem Workbook for Teens. Self-Esteem Workbook for Teens. This is in English. I think it's maybe available in Polish as well. Uh, by Lisa M. Schab, would you believe? Uh, spelled up perhaps. Are you going to type it in the chat as well, Marta? Oh, I can do, yes, mm -hmm. um, so that you have access to the name itself, although I don't think there's another book like that on the market. Probably it's pronounced Shab, in fact, not Shab, but I just want mm -hmm. to say it so that you'll be able to write it. Um, this is a very practical book, which has got lots of different types of situations that any teacher may encounter at school, as the name suggests, for teens. So we're talking about like 14 plus, perhaps uh, 13 plus, maybe even these days, maybe even 12 plus because kids grow up so fast. And one of the ideas I, I, I think I showed during my webinar for Ukraine some time ago, was um, taken from that book where um, what seems to be the case, you basically revise uh, parts of the body. But in fact, you ask the students to, um, to then decide um, which parts of the body do what for you. So that's again, working on your English. Then after the, all this language work that happens, you give your students names of various famous people like JK Rowling, and you ask them which part of the body actually helped that woman uh, be famous. Mm -hmm. Then the students realize, oh, it wasn't her shapely legs. It wasn't <laughs> her other beautiful parts of the body. Yes, it was her character, her determination that she stuck with her ideas. Yeah, uh -huh. very sort of eye opening for the students. One of the um, ways, perhaps some other people have got some other ideas that Okay, so to remind you where we are, we looked at question number two, what, what could this specifically mean behind your classroom doors? And we're now moving to question three, which is, okay, but isn't it perhaps to a certain extent at least a question of uh, uh, using, you know, searching for uh, um, modern VAT inspired teaching materials? Uh, or and or um, a matter of changing your approach or, or your attitude, or perhaps it's both. Uh, and again, I'll put this to Marta first and then I'll perhaps comment a little on it myself. Uh, I used to think um, that uh, in the past, let's say, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, that it was just the approach or the attitude, the teacher's attitude, because I thought, well, if, I, if I've got the right attitude, I can easily adapt the materials I have in the book. I can photocopy stuff, I can look for stuff. And now with all the experience I have, I believe that um, publishers and whoever produces materials, your own materials, should actually uh, allow for, for this type of teaching um, in whatever they produce, because it will be much easier for the teachers. Yes, imagine you had mm -hmm. an activity like that in your course book, it saves you time, basically. You don't have to search for ideas. It's their parts of the body. That's one of the suggestions. I'm not saying publishers don't do it because of course, there's an increasingly greater number of fantastic tasks um, in, in course books where uh, there is this value added teaching because course books can teach creativity, can teach critical thinking, all kinds of cooperative tasks, etc. So it's there, but perhaps not as, as globally as I would wish to see it. What's your take on that? Well, I, I was kind of, you know, on on that very much. Uh, you know, if anybody has been in in this 
profession as long as I have, uh, uh, you will recall um, um, books uh, that um, I started out from uh, with titles like We Learn English. Well, not just you, it was me too. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we have moved a, a long way since, right? You know, I, I recall a recent book uh, uh, from Macmillan, for instance, you know, my home publisher, uh, with the title Gateway to the World. And, you know, if you compare We Learn English to Gateway to the World, and I think the very title shows this massive change of perspective, does it not? So, you know, 30 years ago, it was about learning the English, right? Learning the grammar and vocabulary and maybe some language functions, uh, you know, teaching reading, um, not much listening in that book anyway, <laughs> but uh, Gateway to the World. And of course, it's not just a, a sort of, you know, a marketing ploy, it's not just a, a, a way to, to uh, sort of suck up, you know, to current audiences. But if you look at what's uh, um, behind the covers, uh, then you will find a whole track uh, where uh, students' uh, life skills are being developed on a completely systematic basis. So I think, indeed, quite a lot has changed for the better in the in the materials that we can take advantage of and of course this is just you know one isolated example out of many uh, you know i recall titles like get involved you know another uh, a recent course book uh, get involved so it, you know it's about global citizenship right it's about participating it's about maybe changing the world uh, on a local and perhaps slightly less local scale as well and you know getting in some cases very young learners to start thinking about this because again you know the message is it's part of uh, um, how the future is going to be shaped so in that sense i think it is and it has been reflected uh, thank goodness to uh, a certain extent at least in the more modern uh, teaching materials but i think this other uh, part of the question is also relevant isn't it marta a question of attitude uh, a question of uh, approach okay but imagine uh, if i may a situation in which um all of these value added skills, um, value added tasks are not like lumped onto the units as a mm -hmm. separate section, but you can see them woven through the whole, uh, the whole unit. So it's not like I have time, I will do critical thinking. I have time, I will do creativity. I have time, I will do that. Right. No, it's there. <laughs> so it's in the core of the unit. Or at least perhaps, you know, it's an integral part of the way that those activities are described in the teacher's book, right? But, you know, not, as you said, not just a special not spread, ever. you know, ever. once a unit, but uh, in a sense, activity after activity after activity. Yes, yes, not mm -hmm. add-ons. And I think a lot of publishers do it. Um, it's it's common knowledge that I also write course books and, 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 and um, materials for high schools. And that's what I try to do. Yes, weave it into the material rather than just stick it on the back of the unit. If, if, if somebody has time, they will deal with that. It's, that's what I'm saying. But at the same time, lots of materials on the market that you can see people publish and you, you see contextless sentences, um, mm -hmm. or they have context. The context is just, it's a not nice text about a tree or a nice text about a car. But, you know, it, mm -hmm. it teaches them English, fair enough, but it doesn't give more, doesn't give the added value. That's that's my point. Yeah. Okay. Now, on the on the uh, issue of changing attitude or changing approach, I mean, what is your personal take on that? I mean, you sort of started out by saying that um, you've uh, maneuvered. Uh, your own approach quite significantly over the years in this respect, haven't you? Mm, yes, because I realized that, uh, what, uh, I don't know, I always liked being in the classroom and I always thought I knew how to reach my students. But then you realize at some point that that's just not enough because you can give them so much more. And at the same time, I keep telling the teachers because there's often this complaint, come on, how much more can I learn? to be successful in this profession? How much more should I learn? Mm -hmm. uh, I have no money, no interest, nobody respects me. Why should I care? 
um, the context where I work isn't much better for most people. You may find it hard to believe. And it's not about how much effort I put in. Um, it's about me helping myself. So if I train myself to understand other people, to understand how groups work, then I'm helping myself because I don't struggle. If somebody shouts at me in the classroom or the per work group work is not working out for me, then I have the tools and the attitude <laughs> and the knowledge to help the group and by then by that help myself mm -hmm. so by actually getting the knowledge yes uh, you're helping yourself not just the students because your job becomes far more satisfying simply because you know how to handle stressful situations how not to get burnt out if you don't have that knowledge it's all your intuition it might be perfect but it might lead you astray uh, I think this leads us rather nicely into the next uh, uh, question, which is, okay, uh, you mentioned um, certain competences, uh, uh, but uh, let's take a slightly more global um, view on things now, which is, okay, but uh, are we doing this because ultimately we wish to help our learners uh, in the future career track, uh, help their uh, employability, uh, or is it something else that we are concerned with here? Um, you know, those attitudes that uh, uh, we are perhaps imparting with the students. Uh, and how does uh, that pan out and what do we know about this? Uh, and here, perhaps uh, I will start for a change. And, and I'll say that, uh, you know, in the session that I gave uh, at Ayatefu in Poznan, I spent quite a bit of time uh, um, getting uh, my participants to think about this idea of uh, human capital in education, you know, something that uh, has been around for quite some time. Uh, there's this famous book by uh, uh, Gary Becker called human capital. And, you know, the basic tenet of this approach is uh, to establish this more or less direct link between, uh, uh, you know, how educated a person is and what sort of job prospects, career prospects, uh, uh, employability prospects that person has got. And uh, interestingly, uh, this direct link um, has come under quite a bit of fire in recent years, not least because uh, some researchers have started uh, questioning, based on you know hard research, questioning this idea of one-to-one -one relationship and uh, saying, well, actually, actually, if you research this, it is not uh, uh, so obviously the case that those employability prospects do improve with education. And you know, if one thinks now uh, about the way that uh, that society is moving, about AI uh, taking a lion's share of the job market, isn't it perhaps uh, slightly worrying, um, you know, for the future generation, you know, the current generation of learners who are going to be, you know, future uh, um, employees, that there simply may not be enough. Uh, of jobs for them to draw the uh, meaning of life from. And uh, they will, in a sense, be forced, at least some of them, to, to seek meaning somewhere else. And, and perhaps that's also where true education uh, should be uh, um, mindful, uh, so to speak. And I think, to me anyway, as an educator, I would love to see uh, uh, um, less of that kind of, you know, objectivity, employability uh, prospect as the only lens through which uh, education is seen. Uh, this last idea of, is not necessarily mine. Uh, I read a fascinating um, uh, blog post by Philip Kerr recently. In, I wonder whether you know this uh, blog of his, I know Marta does, uh, called... Uh, um, um, Adaptive. What's it called? It's called uh, adaptive learning, uh, adaptive learning in EOT. And only a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks before the conference, um, he uh, uh, produced this post called uh, uh, Learning um, uh, as Earning, in which he actually questioned this very idea. He, he quoted, amongst others, this book by uh, Brown and Lauder called The Death 
of human capital. Uh, and, and basically said, well, you know, let's perhaps stop looking at education only through that uh, 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 utilitarian lens. And that, I think, is where the value adding again comes in, because, you know, part of that larger value could also be looking at a whole of human being. And of course, what Marta said about uh, those micro skills of the teacher uh, getting uh, improved, expanded over time so that he or she can better respond to uh, the sorts of reactions that happen in the classroom, etc., could be also part of the capital that we uh, uh, gradually uh, uh, pass on onto the learners. And I think to me, this is a fascinating and a very worthy prospect for education in years to come. I've mm -hmm. talked a lot, so I'll hand over to Marta. <laughs> no, I will comment on this. I will also comment on uh, the uh, um, question from Bartosz uh, in a second, if you allow, please. But let's let's start with uh, Grzegorz and uh, mm -hmm. your take on this. Well, um, I kind of agree and I don't because um, it depends on how you define employability. <laughs> because, for example, um, and human capital there are lots of definitions of that so i'm not sure which which definition is is the one you refer to mm -hmm. um anyhow if if we question the idea of employability then we should then focus on the idea of human ability i, I suppose okay. <laughs> because uh, to me um i i teach lots of age groups um i also teach at the university where i teach students who are just about to leave and enter the labor market and um uh, english is obviously important to them but um they want to pass some certificates exams and speak as well as possible but at the same time i teach them for example things like i don't know empathy handling stress um uh, resolving conflict and then they come back from their first job interviews and they said they were so stressed out so nervous uh -huh. panicking and they remembered some of the techniques of um of, of what we did in class and it was very helpful and they got the jobs <laughs> very difficult for me to, to to say that but of course education is not just about preparing people for jobs jobs that in many cases we have no idea about because there will be different jobs yes in 10 15 years time that we don't know about. Um, so yes, education is about more than just being employed. It's about handling life, handling, um, I don't know, being flexible, for example, yes, um, responding to change. So much more, but this can be still part of, of education and it may help some people function professionally in the future. Uh, and obviously not only and entirely. If somebody tells you just, you know, what you do is prepare your students for the futures, uh, for the for their future jobs, it's a lot of nonsense, I agree. Um, going back to Bartosz and your question. Um, and also Agnieszka's comment maybe a bit later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it feasible to conduct every single class with VAT in a public school environment? I think where you work has... Um, doesn't matter because I know a lot of uh, teachers who work in posh schools fee-paying schools, uh, language schools, higher, um, you know, education institutions, and all they do is just focus on the language. So it's not just about um, where you teach, is is your attitude. Um, last Friday, I um, I was part of a wonderful meeting in, in Gdańsk as part of Rock Relati, which is our initiative uh, where we talk about uh, building rapport, um, etc. Mm, and uh, I had an immense pleasure of, of meeting for the first time in my life, Ania Konarzewska. Ania Konarzewska, as you may recognize, um, she's a teacher of Polish. She teaches for uh, a um, public um, state-owned um, school, uh, high school in Poland. Uh, and her ideas for this value-added teaching, she, did, she doesn't call it that way. <laughs> Basically, all she does is value-added teaching. The school which held the event, Szkoła Podstawowa numer 35 in Gdańsk, I'll say it uh, proudly, um, has a wonderful head where teachers, perhaps maybe not every single one, but teachers on the whole, try to accommodate methods like this techniques like this in their class. Every lesson, Bartosz, I wouldn't say it's even necessary, yes? If it's every second lesson, every third lesson, whenever it fits, as long as you have that 
attitude in you to think about it. So you plan a lesson, can I plan it better than just focusing on the language? Yes, and very often <laughs> that's what I've done. That's what I've done and it's now kind of automatic. It's automatic. Okay, this, this activity seems cool, but can I think of something else? If you have no time, because often we have no time to invent things, um, what I tend to do is just to make a list of activities I reuse. So I might have about 100 activities like those I mentioned. I reuse them with different types of words, different types of nouns, adjectives, etc. So it's, it's, it's possible. It's also how you communicate yourself and what education is about to the students. So it doesn't have to be just a particular task. It's what you say and how you communicate the importance of things to your students. So I think it is feasible, yes, to achieve that in a state-owned mm -hmm. school. And let's not be perfectionist. It doesn't have to be every single lesson. And I think Agnieszka uh, Wover's comment applies here, you know, beautifully. She says, maybe it's worth trying from small steps. And we will see that after some time, our attitude will change. And then if we don't even try, then we'll never find out. I think that that's a beautiful, uh, a beautiful uh, way to uh, conclude that thread. Uh, in, in plus, the... plus, if I may add, I teach towards exam groups. So you would imagine there is no time for nonsense like that because I teach towards Matura. There has to be time, otherwise we just produce employable individuals, robots. Well, well there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And perhaps, uh, again, it is, seems like it's it's moving rather smoothly because our fifth and final um, uh, uh, question for tonight is about this one. Uh, sort of answering Bartosz's uh, 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 worry as well. Uh, 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 to a certain extent, you know, can we really expect a typical, responsible, and dedicated language teacher to have the relevant competences herself or himself to genuinely bring in that extra value to his or her uh, teaching? And if not, on not necessarily, uh, where do we look for inspiration and help? Um, and you know, this, this is something that I feel rather strongly about, I must say, again, if I, if I may start on, on this one, Marta. Uh, yep. uh, you know, one of the things that uh, uh, continue to strike me wherever I go to a session on, uh, you know, the, the four C's, uh, you know, the, the 21st century skills, critical thinking, et cetera, et cetera, uh, is that uh, uh, I'm often thinking, mm, can we be sure that uh, the teachers, the adults uh, mm, who are in the audience in a session like this uh, uh, can be assumed to actually be uh, good critical thinkers themselves, you know, good collaborators, uh, uh, you know, truly global citizens in the sense of having the right kind of awareness, et cetera, et cetera. In other words, are we not perhaps uh, taking a, a bit of a leap over the fact that the adults also need and deserve support. It's a complex area. Uh, you know, the, the, the things that uh, Marta mentioned earlier, uh, those uh, uh, ways to deal with uh, different types of interaction, uh, different types of students' reactions, uh, uh, self-management, uh, etc. Uh, uh, those are the sorts of things which I think uh, are not I mean, certainly weren't part of my teacher education when I was at university. And, and I um, feel more and more that, that adults, professional adults, uh, uh, deserve uh, this sort of support as part of what we do as perhaps, you know, more, slightly more experienced colleagues. Uh, don't you think, Marta? Yes, um, yes, of course, I agree. I also believe that as um, as English teachers, we're actually in, in many ways privileged guys, because uh, uh, I'm not saying that we are, the, you know, the, the only knowers in this world, but I think we have access to um, a lot of materials also written in English and um, opportunities to get trained up, um, perhaps so far more often than, than than other teachers although you know training happens across the subjects uh, naturally um 
I can't speak for for the people who are listening to us now because I don't know what what how you how you feel how qualified you feel or how competent you feel in those um, um, skills. But um, in, in my case, I had to really truly learn um, social skills as a person. Um, it took me years to understand how groups work, how societies work, and uh, and the knowledge and the what I gained as a result of participating in all kinds of courses was amazing, an amazing experience. I also had to learn. I'm generally quite creative, but to be to be honest, uh, I didn't have many tools before I um, had a chance to take part in some creativity courses so, so be creative if you like naturally versus being creative uh, uh, more deliberately right having the, the creativity yeah, the tool. tools yeah the tools yeah. again yes yeah. recently me and you we participated in this design um well not recently it was like some time ago obviously but uh design thinking in education job crafting things which you know 10 15 years ago i had no idea what they were about and once i understand the system and how it works it helps me and i i, I i've sort of begun to incorporate this into my teaching my life my professional development so i think there's always scope for learning and scope for actually acquiring more advanced skills for a world that requires more advanced skills from the teachers but we may not like the idea but that's what's happening yeah okay, maybe we love the idea i don't know <laughs> i love the idea but perhaps some people feel overwhelmed but to understand the world and to understand new people meaning our students much younger than us yes we have to somehow know uh, what they need that means getting knowledge on on you know the new world and how it um, how it functions Okay, so uh, <laughs> on that note, uh, one thing that we would like to conclude with is that, uh, as uh, Marta said at the beginning, we have been uh, playing with those ideas for several years now and um, discussing them between the two of us, reading on them, uh, quarreling about them in some cases, taking part in various courses. And out of all of this, uh, um, we have um, conceived our mo most recent uh, uh, professional brainchild, uh, which is uh, uh, this program, uh, which uh, with your permission, we are going to just uh, showcase for five seconds. Uh, it is called a Thought Leader Academy. As you can see, some of those books uh, have inspired um, uh, the very wording of uh, of the name of the program, and uh, uh, we are very proud that uh, IATFL Poland is part of uh, of the effort to get to uh, uh, get the idea uh, um, to circulate uh, the idea about this program. And in fact, uh, it, again, very proud <laughs> that uh, because of the uh, and thanks to the uh, cooperation with IATFL, we are able to offer you guys as IATFL members uh, an 18 percent discount on that course. Uh, all you need to do is when you get in touch with us is quote the name IATFL PL. This is your secret discount code. The program, uh, as you can see, starts in about a month, a bit less than a month. So there is still time to uh, uh, take a look at the uh, project website. Marta, if you could perhaps uh, input the the um, uh, our homepage uh, uh, address in the chat so that people can take a look. Uh, so if you uh, if you uh, um, started thinking maybe maybe I uh, would like to seek a bit more uh, uh, support in areas that Mart Marta enumerated uh, job crafting uh, uh, design thinking in education and a bunch of others then perhaps this is something that uh, you might consider and uh, okay. that that I think basically is uh, the program for tonight uh, unless well, maybe... apart, apart from if I may because there was a question um... okay, uh, couple Stop of it. comments if we do we have time to address them the comments uh, um, Lutzena, can we have another couple of minutes please okay how can we make creative eliminating uh, my yes so okay. i demuted myself of course of course yes yes how can we make creative and splendid online lessons splendid perhaps is not the word because lessons have to be good enough um 
splendid is I'm not sure that that's the word I would use um, I don't like this wow effect in my lessons personally I want my lessons to be well constructed useful I would say to the learner rather than splendid but I understand your point of view um, it's difficult in online classes well the pandemic I think has taught us a lot and uh, depends again how we define creativity if we talk about solving problems, if we, we talk about looking for solutions, or we simply talk about verbal creativity, uh, what are we talking about if it comes to creativity? Um, still, there are lots and lots of activities that I remember implementing while teaching online because I knew that my students would not want to sit and read stuff from the screen from their course books because it simply wasn't on it wasn't interesting mm -hmm. so if you contact me please i can send you links to some short effective interesting um activities which work in online classes um, it's, mm -hmm. it's there and again i have made my own collection i don't look for stuff every day for five hours i have a collection i refer to because otherwise it's simply impossible and someone said, uh, Bartosz again, I guess each person has its own field and area. Yes, absolutely. That we feel certain in, sure. Uh, so you may be, for example, certain in, I don't know, group dynamics. Okay. But does it mean you're certain in how to solve conflicts with parents, for example? So one area is perfect, but I think education is so multifaceted that one area, if that's, that's what you meant, may not be enough to help you survive in this profession, I'm afraid. It's a wonderful job and we do a wonderful, um, or we do wonderful things, plural, for our students, but it's still a very demanding job. But we can make it less demanding if we understand ourselves, our students and the processes more. So that would be my, my quick answer for the time we have been <laughs> We have been allowed. Okay, I think we need to finish as uh, the time is up. So uh, 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 I think it's now over to Lucina. Uh, thank, thank you, you very much for listening, for being with us, asking questions, being so um, so involved. It matters. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for inspiring us with all of your ideas. And uh, uh, at the end, I didn't want to be involved too, mu too much in the discussion that took place uh, in the chat box. But uh, at the end, I will allow myself just to say that you are talking my language. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that is something that really is at the bottom of my heart. Uh, when I think more and more of us, honestly, I know it because I run lots of events for teachers, and there are more and more of us. One day it's going to be a beautiful world. Let's believe it. <laughs> let's believe it. Yes. So let's let's finish on this uh, on this mystic note. note because it's the just the beginning of the school year and academic year is about to start. So we hope that uh, perhaps you know it's a little ray of hope and positive thinking uh, mm -hmm. about uh, uh, what's going to happen over the next few months. Thank you, everybody for being with us uh, uh, tonight. Thank you for sharing your precious knowledge and your ideas with all of us. And we are looking forward. Uh, I will, I will, uh, I hope I will express the, the wish of the participants uh, to your future webinars. Uh, more inspiration in future. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you much. Enough for your support. Become leaders. Believe in everybody. Go ahead. Leaders, believe in yourself, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>